Come back to the Rebusha YouTube channel. Today, I'm going to be learning how to make this beautiful boo boo with flans. So, it has this basic sleeve underneath and a flans on top of it. A long boo boo dress, and it's really beautiful and simple to make. This is something you like to learn. Kindly stay tuned to the end of this tutorial. Thank you. To make this boo boo dress, my fabric is already folded into four. Which is I'm folding front and back together. So to fold this, you first fold your fabric into two. This is the length, which is my full length, which is 58 inches, and this is the width. So I'm going to be using my hip measurement divided by four for the width. So you fold your fabric into two, and then you fold again. So when you are folding this time, it's a kind of fitted dress, it's not free, so you're going to be having a zipper running through the back. So for this allowance of the zipper, I'm going to be leaving one inch so when i'm folding again i'm not going to fold completely i'm going to leave that one inch for my zipper which is what i have here so now this folded point these two folded points one two becomes my center front and these two open parts with the zipper allowance becomes my two back and two front so this is what i have folded on this paper so here is going to be my starting point and that's where i'm going to take my shoulder measurement so the shoulder i'm working with is 16 inches so I'm taking the measurement from the folded point, not the zipper allowance area. And that's 16 divided by 2, which is 8. On that 8, I'm going to go down by 1 inch for my shoulder slope. And depending on the neckline that you want to work with, but I'm just going to work with the 3 inches by 3 inches tentatively for the front and 3 inches by 1 inch for the back. So there, I'm going to connect it. You should use a curve for this. I'm just using my free hand. Okay. So that's my neckline and then from there i'm going to connect for my shoulder slope so for my armhole the armhole is nine inches so from the shoulder i'm marking the nine inches and on that point i'm going to take my bust measurement the bust is 44 44 divided by 4 is 11. i'm going to add up an inch for ease because i don't want it too tight and i'm not going to be adding a dart so after adding my ease i'm going to add one and a half inches as well for my zipper allowance for my seam allowance sorry the waist i'm working with is 16 inches 17 inches so i have 17 inches here the round waist measurement is 38 38 divided by four is nine and a half so i'm adding half an inch to that as well and then i'm going to add one and a half inch seam allowance so from there i'm going to connect my waist to my hip to my my bust to my waist okay and also, I'm going to draw out my, I hope you can see what I'm doing. I'm also going to draw my arm O curve using this curve that I have. So I'm trying to get a really nice curve. So once I have that, I'm going to draw my arm O curve. And I'm drafting this directly on my fabric as we have seen. So now from there, I'm going to take my hip line measurement. The hip line is 26. So I have 26 here. And on that point, I'm going to take my round hip divided by 4. So the round hip is 46. 46 divided by 4 is around 11 and a half. So if I had half an inch for ease, I'll have 12 inches. And then I'm going to add my one and a half inch seam allowance. So from there, I'm going to take my curve driller again and then I'm going to reconnect it. So please work with a good curve. This curve that I'm working with is not for shaping. So I'm just going to use my ruler and then I'll blend this in on this waist area so that it's not going to be too sharp. So now it depends on what you want. If you want it to be just free, so what you have on your hip line, you just take it down. But if you want it to be pencil, you just remove from, you remove like one and a half or one inch from what you have here and take it down. Then you open your slit at the back. But I'm just going to take this down straight and then I'm still going to open my slit at the back. So now what I have measured here, which is around 13 and a half inches, I'll go over to the hemline and measure the same 13 and a half inches. And then I'm going to make it into a straight line. Then I'll cut out my grid. So now with my scissors, I'm cutting the side first. And here I'm going to cut my armhole. So after cutting my armhole, 
I'll cut out my shoulder slope and then the back neckline. So now I'm going to decide the type of neckline that I want to work with. So this is what the dress is looking like so far. So for the neckline, remember I used 3 inches. So the 3 inches, I'm just going to increase it a bit by 1 inch. And then I'll make this 4 inches. And then for the neck depth of the front as well, I think I'm going to use around... I've already taken 3 inches. So I'll use 4 and half or 4 inches. So after connecting it, I'm going to take my curve now. And then reconnect my new neckline. So it's just going to be a bit wide. But not so much. So now this is my new neckline. So for the back, I'm going to maintain the neck depth that I have. I'm just going to reshape the neck width because now I have four in four inches for my neck width. And then for the front neck depth, I'm going to raise up my front and then shape out my neck depth. So this is what I have now. I'm going to tape. The neckline of a of the front i want to design it to this velvet bias so i have a one inch velvet bias i'm just going to fold this into two so that i'll have half an inch and then i want to use it to design the front so that it's not going to be plain so i'll just place it like this now and then sew it around the neckline so for accuracy you can just take your chalk and then use it to mark out where you are going to place it faintly because this is the front so i'm just going to place my fabric like this and then you design the depth that you want for this neckline so if it's one inch you just mark one inch all around your neckline if it's one and a half inches you mark one and a half inches all around your neckline but because i'm going to still turn this neckline in so that's like half inch gone so i'm going to mark around one and a half inch all around and that's where I'm going to tape my bias. So you can have just one taping or you can have two. It's totally up to you and the design you're willing to go for. So I'll go ahead now and then tape my neckline with the bias. I'll also cut facing so that I can clean this neckline up. So I have taped the neckline with my bias and I did two of it. So it has like half an inch space in between them. And then I also cut out facing for the front and back so that I can cut it out. So facing is just like cutting a small size of a lining. So I used that to turn it out and then I joined it on the shoulder. So I so close my zipper allowance so that I can show us how to add the flounce. So for the flounce, you need to determine where you want it to stop. For me, I want it to stop around knee length, which is around 36 inches. So what you just need to do now is to multiply the 36 inches. Remember? one for the front and one for the back you must play the six inches by two and that's going to be around 72 inches if you are cutting a flare so it's advisable to work with an half with a half circle flare the half circle flare is not going to consume too much and it's not going to be too big but for me i'm just going to be working with a slash and spread method because i don't have too much fabric to work with so for a half circle flare after dividing your measurements by your 72 inches by 3.142 it's going to give you around 24 inches or thereabouts so after folding your fabric into two you fold in triangular form and then you mark the radius which is 24 inches in this case so after marking your 24 inches all around from there you mark the length of the flare so for me i'm working with nine inches including allowance so you mark your nine inches then have some marking it out you're going to cut out your flare so once you cut out your flare you open it out and then you shape it so this is going to be for the front and this is going to be for the back so to shape it you're going to connect from from the hem that's where your flare stops which is here you can measure like one inch or half an inch and then from there you are going to blend it together with the other length that you have so that the length is going to be tapering towards the the downside that's the knee length it's not going to be as wide as what you have on your shoulder so from there you can measure one inch downwards and then from there you use your curve or your free hand to just blend this well with the length that you have coming from there so once you blend it you're going to take your scissors and then you shape it so once you shape it now 
once after fixing it you can see that you're going to be having this part narrow while the part on your shoulder which is this to be wide but for me i'm going to be working with a slash and spread because this is going to consume more fabric so for a slash and spread i'm just going to be working with the 36 inches because i can easily double it so what i'm going to measure is the length of 36 inches so after measuring 36 inches length i'm going to measure how wide the flare is going to be so like i said it's nine inches but because this is a paper i'm just going to leave it as four inches so now this this paper is 36 inches long so on the hem that's the part on the hem of the flare that's around the knee area the same one inch that i measured earlier i'm going to measure it okay so this is going to be the part where i'm going to sew to my bodies and this is going to be the part that is shaped so here now from here i'm just going to connect from this from this one inch that i measured i'm going to connect to the nine inch like this so after connecting it it's going to give you this shape and i'm going to cut out this shape so after cutting out the shape i'm going to create some lines which is going to be my slash lines okay i'm going to create these lines then after creating these lines i'm going to slash and spread this so you're not going to be slashing it on this straight part that you are sewing to your shoulder you're going to be slanting it on this bent part so i'm going to slash it and then cut to the tip not completely so after cutting it to the tip like this you slash everything and then you're going to spread it to introduce more volume so that i can give you that flare effect because you don't want it to be straight so i'll go and do this now bring it back to show us okay so i've measured my length of 36 inches as you can see and then i went ahead to slash and then i spread it in just a little so that i can give me that small flounce effect because i don't have enough fabric so when you're when you're cutting remember we cut out just 36 inches and then we need two of it for front and back so on this side that's the white part not this narrow part on your knee the part on your shoulder you make sure that you put your fabric on fold okay this part has to be on fold so that by the time you use it to cut it out and you open it up you are going to have you are going to have what is going to be enough for both your front and your back so you can see that this part is on fold now and then i've cut the two sides together so by the time i open it out now i'm going to place this on my front and then this on my back so what you're going to do now is that this shaped part you are going to aim it inwards you can aim it with your bias or you can just fold it twice so to fix this on my on my dress i have notched 36 inches that's where i want it to stop so you can see my notch to serve as a guide so i'm going to open it out that's why i'm yet to close the side so that it can be easy for me so after opening it out like this i'm going to place it just around one inch half an inch so that i can fix my sleeve easily so i'm going to bring in the flounce you notch where your shoulder is and then you just fold it over like this and then place and then you start sewing it so you just sew it straight down okay just sew it straight down like this you sew it okay this is my shoulder so i'm just going to place it here so that i can have enough space to sew my arm hole so sew my sleeve to my hand pull then i'm just going to place it straight or you can just measure how you want it to go from your allowance so this is my one and a half inches seam allowance so from my seam allowance you can measure around four inches all through and then you pin it down and then you just sew it down so that by the time you sew it and you flip it over it's just going to rest on your sleeve so after sewing it down on both sides both my front and back I'll go ahead and fix my basic sleeve. So it's just a basic sleeve that I have cut out already. So this is the sleeve. If you have a lace fabric, you're going to tape it around the sleeve. But I'm going to be taping this beautiful trimming that I have on the edge of my lace just to beautify the edge of the sleeve. So here, I'm going to sew this to the edge of the sleeve so that I can give it this design that i have here just so that it's not plain but if you have a, a any lace of the colors that you have on your acara fabric you can also work with that so after placing it i'm going to go ahead now and sew my sleeve as well so i'm going to sew my sleeve to the hand area that i have so after sewing the sleeve i'm going to 
close the bodies and then i'm going to sew it on the side so i don't want this to be too long i'll go ahead and do that and bring it back to show i have gone ahead to hem the the flounce you can see how i hem it and then i sew it on the space that i want it to be so you can see so after sewing it i just place my sleeve around the armhole as well and i just sew it around the armhole so this is my basic sleeve and this is the flounce on top of it i did the same thing for the other side as well i sew in my flounce first and then i sew in my basic sleeve you can see that my basic sleeve is even covering the rough edges on the shoulder area of the flounce so on the basic sleeve i just sew in my trimming so what i'm going to do now is just flip this over then after flipping it over i'm going to match everything together then i'm going to start to sew so when you're sewing you make sure you tuck in your flounce so that your flounce is not going to be obstructing what you're doing and then i'm going to sew from the sleeve all the way to the side seam on both sides so after sewing this on the side seam area i'm going to open my sleeve The side is joined now and you can see my little flare on top and the basic sleeve we had underneath it so i'm going to trim off the excess that i have the net that i have on my trimming so this is what the full view of the dress looks like and you can see how beautiful this is looking i hope you enjoyed making this beautiful tutorial with me if you enjoyed it let us know in the comment section kindly subscribe to our channel if you haven't share our video so that other people can get to see it and i'll see you in the next one bye